Hi everyone, welcome to a session on dinosaur classification. Throughout this session, we're going to be focusing on the ways in which dinosaurs are classified or grouped according to evidence. Dinosaurs have been categorised over time, with this changing with new discoveries, new fossils and how this information was interpreted. This will show us how science changes based on new evidence, or also by different interpretations of this evidence. I'm going to try and help you understand where dinosaurs fall in the kingdom of living things, how they are grouped, as well as some changes along the way. Classification is a system used to group living things. This system is made based on things that living things have in common, their common characteristics or traits. When you classify or categorize something, you put it in a group based on things it has in common with others in that group. Carolus Linnaeus used this to create his kingdom of living things, which groups all living things in existence. Classification helps us understand the relationships between living things. In this session, we will focus on dinosaurs, their classification and the criteria and relationships between different dinosaurs. A classification key is a diagram that organises the groups you're categorising. It's a visual way of seeing what falls into each group, helping us see the commonalities between them. The key helps us see the criteria and the things that have them. As you can see, there is a title and a series of subgroups. In the case we're looking at, our title would be dinosaurs, and we'll discuss the subgroups and criteria as we move on. Before we start looking at dinosaur classification, let's find out where dinosaurs fall in the classification of all living things. Dinosaurs are classified as reptiles because when they were first discovered, it was believed they shared the same features as reptiles, cold-blooded, with scales and who laid eggs with a protective shell. Now, something worth noting here is another living thing that falls into this group is birds, but more about that later. Let's get into the grouping of dinosaurs. This was first done by H.G. Seeley. Seeley groups dinosaurs according to their hip shape. The first group was the Saurischia group, dinosaurs who had lizard-like hips. The other group, the Ornithischia group, included dinosaurs with bird-like hips, as can be seen here. The examples we show here are the Allosaurus with lizard-like skeletal hips and a Stegosaurus with bird-like hips. These were the overarching groups, which were then further broken down into subgroups. The Saurischia group was further broken down into two subgroups, theropods and sauropods. Theropods were three-toed carnivorous dinosaurs, meaning they had a meat-based diet. The example I've included here is a velociraptor. On the right, we've got sauropods. These were large dinosaurs who were four-toed and had a herbivore or plant-based diet. The example I've included here is a diplodocus. These are the two subgroups of the Saurischia group. The other main group was the Ornithischia group, and this group was divided into five subgroups. The first group was the Thyreophora group. These were slow moving dinosaurs with spikes and the example I've included here is a Stegosaurus. Next up we have the Ankylosauria group. These were medium sized dinosaurs with body armour and the example I've included is an Ankylosaurus. Next up we have Seropods. These were four legged dinosaurs with horns, for example a Triceratops. On the bottom we have the Ornithopoda group. These were dinosaurs that had bird-shaped feet and walked on two feet, and the example I've included is a Tenontosaurus. Lastly, we have the Pachycephalosauria group. These were thick-headed, slow-moving dinosaurs that also walked on their back legs, and the example I've included here is an Acrotholus. H. 
H.G. Seeley's classification actually stuck around for almost 200 years, untouched and unchanged. This was until Dodson came along and became involved in dinosaur classification upon the discovery of fossil evidence for the Avaceratops dinosaur. Dodson added the Avaceratops to the dinosaur group by adding a subgroup called Ceratopsia. These were herbivorous dinosaurs with parrot-like beaks. Bearing in mind that Seely had made the original classification in the 1800s, this happened in the 1980s and the next changes took place as recently as 2017 and 2018. Michael Benton shook up the classification of dinosaurs with a new way of interpreting the evidence from dinosaur fossils. He suggested that theropods, as can be seen here, should actually be in the Ornithischia group due to a more recent discovery in examining its hip shape, making it more bird-like than lizard-like. Within the same year, Norman and Barrett proposed that there should be a new group added to the classification of dinosaurs. Again, this would mean taking the theropods out of the Cerischia group and moving them to the Ornithischians and make a completely new group. This movement is still being debated today, making the dinosaur family tree a thing of mystery and discussion, open to interpretation and changed based on the work of different scientists. In 2018, Cow published a paper that made more links between the dinosaur groupings, which would mean more movement around the dinosaur family tree, or classification key, categorising dinosaurs using different links and criteria. The most recent developments involve paleontologists studying the role of evolution and how the way dinosaurs changed over time might mean more movement and more shake-ups of the dinosaur family tree. As can be seen by how dinosaur classification has changed with new evidence, new interpretations and new questions being raised, we can see how science is open to interpretation and is constantly changing. That's the beauty of science. It's an open book, ready to be written, read, reread and rewritten. As long as it has been since dinosaurs roamed, we're still learning to fully understand them, even today. As promised, let's take a look at birds. Did you know that technically birds are reptiles and also they're dinosaurs? Yes, birds fall into the theropod group of the dinosaur classification as they fit the criteria for that group. So it turns out that dinosaurs are technically still roaming to this very day. Is this something worth researching? There's lots to read out there and as mentioned before, lots of different interpretations of this science. Using the knowledge that we've gathered in this session, let's put it to the test. Can you classify this dinosaur? Take a look at its features, things that may help you with clues of the criteria for the group it falls into. This is an Allosaurus. Have a look at its feet. How many toes does it have? It's a three-toed dinosaur. Check out its jaw and teeth. Does that tell you anything about its diet? It was carnivorous. This tells us that it falls into the Cerischia grouping, but which subgroup? Considering it's a carnivore, it fits into the theropod group. Next up, we have a dinosaur with some features that might provide us with clues as to which subgroup it falls into. This is a Styracosaurus, and as can be seen, it's four-legged and it has horns. Which group does it fall into? It's in the Ornithischia group, but which subgroup? Thinking back to the subgroups, dinosaurs with horns fall into the Theropod group.
Next up, we have a rather large dinosaur. That provides us with a clue as to which group it falls into. This is a Supersaurus. Any other features that might help us out? It's four-footed. Have a look at its jaw and teeth. What does that tell us, perhaps, about its diet? It was a herbivore. So we know that this is a Saurischia dinosaur, but which subgroup does it fall into? Because of its herbivorous diet, it's a sauropod. Lastly, we have another dinosaur with a feature that stands out more than the others. This is a Stegoceras. Which feature can you see most obviously? It's thick headed. It also moves on its back legs, making it quite a slow moving dinosaur. What does that tell us about its group? It's in the Ornithischia group, but which subgroup? If you can remember, dinosaurs with thick headed features belong in the Pachycephalosauria group. Thank you for listening to today's session. I hope you've learned something about dinosaur classification. If you'd like some more activities based on the themes of dinosaurs, space and more upcoming themes, please visit the stemhub.org.uk and check out our STEM at Home section. Thank you.